Apiology is a scientific study of honeybees and is a subdiscipline off of molytology, which is the study of general bees and can also be called apicology. Molytology consists of over 17,000 species of honeybees versus apiology, which only consists of 44 main species of honeybees. Most of the bees in the hive are worker bees, and they take care of almost everything in the hive. They nurture the larvae when the eggs hatch, go out and collect pollen and nectar from flowers. They create honey by combining their saliva with the pollen that is stored directly in the comb and spit it back out into the honeycombs. And finally, basically take care of everything except for laying the eggs. Now here is a cross section of the worker bee. As you can see, the stinger of the worker bee is barbed, so when it stings an attacker, the worker bee stinger is caught in the attacker. Something else that is interesting involving the stinger is that you may have noticed that some of the bee's vital organs are attached to the stinger, meaning that when the worker stings the attacker, the stinger is most of the time ripped from their body, pulling all their vital organs out with it, leaving the worker bee to die. The queen has one main job, and that is to lay eggs in the honeycombs to make sure the hive stays populated. Here is the anatomy of the queen bee. As you might have noticed, the stinger of the queen bee is not barbed, meaning it can sting you multiple times like a wasp or hornet. Other than that, the queen is indifferent other than their longer abdomen that contains mature sex organs and all of its egg-laying organs. The drones are the only male bees in the hive, and all of them but one do nothing. Most of them just eat the hard-earned honey. Then in the fall, all but one are kicked out of the hive to freeze to death by the winter. The one drone stays and breeds with the queen to keep the hive populated over the winter. The drone's anatomy is very similar to the worker bees, but it does not have a stinger. Once the queen bee mates, she returns to the hive and is never mated again. To sum drones up, they either mate or kick get kicked out of the hive to freeze to death. None of them will remain in the hive over the winter. Colony collapse disorder is one of the biggest threats to honeybees, along with mites, and has been one of the biggest killers of honeybees since the early 2000s. According to the Environmental Protection Agency, colony collapse disorder is the phenomenon that occurs when the majority of honeybees in a colony disappear and leave behind a queen, plenty of food, and a few nurse bees to care for the remaining immature honeybees and the queen. Hives lost over the winter months is a sad thing. During the year of 2008, about 60% of hives were lost because of colony collapse disorder. That number later dropped in 2013 to 31%, and over the past couple of years, colony collapse disorder was not mentioned in the cause of lost hives. A cool invention that I came across while doing this project is called a flow hive. It allows you to harvest fresh honey from a beehive in just a few minutes. It uses special honeycombs that are split down the middle of each column of the wax when you turn a crank on the side of the hive. The honey then flows down to the bottom of the hive, where it runs through a filter, and then flows out a spout at the front of the hive. To better explain this, here is a video from its creators on the flow hive. So how does it work? The flow frame consists of already partly formed honeycomb cells. The bees complete the comb with their wax and fill the cells with honey, capping it off, ready for harvest. When you turn the handle, our patented split cell technology creates channels inside the comb, allowing the honey to flow down and out of the hive while the bees are undisturbed on the comb surface. Turn the tap again, which resets the comb into the original position and allows the bees to chew the wax back and fill it with honey again. For the commercial beekeeper, the frames are built to accommodate a pneumatic system, which means you can flick a switch and harvest your whole apiary at once. We've been testing prototypes with beekeepers from around the world. I've spent hours taking honey out of hives. This system is just, blows my mind. I tell you, I was very excited too when it actually worked. <laughs> when I actually put the tubes in and watched the honey come out, I was sitting there going, <laughs> what? <laughs> One interesting fact about honeybees is that Albert Einstein said, 
If the bee disappeared off the surface of the globe, then man would only have four years of life left. This shows that even many years ago, honeybees were noticed to have a major impact on the planet. Another interesting fact about honeybees is that if a queen bee dies, the workers will create a royal jelly and will feed it to one larva, and it will grow into a queen bee instead of a worker or a drone. Another part of that interesting fact is that almost all the eggs in the hive can become a queen if treated right. All the eggs are fed royal jelly, which is a mixture of pollen and honey, for the first three days of the larva's life. If the egg continues to get royal jelly, it will become a queen. Then if its diet is changed, it will become a worker or a drone. The next interesting fact is that a worker bee will only live about two weeks of its adult life because it will work itself to death. This is true in the summer months because it will wear their wings out. Then the final fun fact is that a queen bee can live up to five years, and then she is most busy during the summer, and in a summer day, she can lay up to 2,500 eggs. I'm not going to ask you to go out and buy yourself a hive of bees, because beekeeping is very expensive and time-consuming, and you can plan on spending over $500 just to get your hive set up. And honey extraction tools can also add to that cost, but you can do other small things to help bees. First of all, you can plant flowers that are easily accessible to bees. And then you can also use pesticide on those plants that are safe for honeybees. And finally, if you see a honeybee on the ground or on a flower, don't pick something up to smash it with. Just leave it be and it will leave you be. Thank you.